Everywhere you go, you're going to take your thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs, your associations, your past, your memories, your identification, your identification with form, your identification as this body. You're going to take your slavery well, you know and try to find freedom. It's, like, it's oh, closed, right? It's closed. It's like set. It's like limited. It's like only what you know. I've been in a book somewhere, right? I would. That's exactly so, right. Um, Somebody uh, would have told just me. Just the idea that uh, hey, you could do that for yourself, you know, That's and right. it's not going to interfere with your job or your That's wife right. or your family. Hello, my name is Richard Miller, and welcome to Never Not Here. I'm always saying this show is our way to take a fresh new look at the world, and we also want to take a fresh new look at this show, and see. How can we really talk about something that so many people tell us you can't really talk about? So we're really pitting ourselves to, uh, against a, a real challenge. And uh, it's some, it just seems confusing, you know, to talk about something you can't talk about. You know, I mean, there's always a misunderstanding. And uh, you talk about fullness, you talk about emptiness, and... Uh, you talk about how life is fitting in there. Somehow life is in there somewhere, or life is is all around there. And uh, I don't know. We just want to work it out. So we have a panel of experts today. And uh, we just want to get the feel of, of what life is really all about. And so without further ado, I want to introduce Jeff Foster. And uh, he's from England and has been in Chicago for the weekend. And uh, our friend... Kevin Edwards, and uh, he's kind of living in Chicago and been our friend for some time. And uh, so, here we go. Welcome, guys. <laughs> Welcome. I'm still waiting for the panel of experts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you say... Uh, so many times they say, uh, you know, teachers say, uh, who are, you know, ask, just look, who are you? You know, who am I? And uh, I don't know. I guess you're supposed to find nothing. You know, I mean, I never found anything. Mm -hmm. And um, in some ways they say, well, it's just obvious there's nothing there. And it's not so obvious because, I mean, just look at astronomy, for instance. I mean, there's a black hole. I mean, maybe Jeff knows more about that than I do. I don't but know I mean, anything about astrophysics. Don't ask oh, me yeah. about astrophysics. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I don't think you see a black hole. You just see what's around it. And if things, if things bend in a certain way, you say, oh, well, there must be, you intuit that there's a mass there and, there's got a, and, you can, and you can't see it. There's no light, so it must be a black They just figure out it's a black hole, so... That's who I am. I'm a black hole, and uh, uh, and I can't find Richard Miller, and uh, I only can see the things around it. What is this nothingness that everything springs out of? I think I'd like to um, object. <laughs> Go ahead. That's great. <laughs> I object. Um, my 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 experience has has taught me in and working with people and and whatnot uh and this whole um self denying self effacing kind of um method that people use to become free and they want to use it to become free of themselves and become free of suffering even legitimate even legitimate suffering like maybe grief or or maybe anger or unresolved issues and and things like that. So, I would um, I would uh, have a point of departure on, on that whole thing. And what I would say, in my own experience, is it's not nothing. It's nothing perceivable or conceivable, which is a huge difference than nothing. You know, just because you've done the inquiry, you know, who am I, or you've looked, you know. Um, Instead of looking outward, you've looked from the inside, or you've looked at the inside, or however spatially you want to talk about it. You know, when you've asked, who am I uh, beyond um, all understanding of, of who I am? And there's the great silence, and there's the, the great spaciousness, and there's not two. It doesn't necessarily follow that there's nothing 
it just follows that there's nothing perceivable or conceivable that really what we're interested in is not falling out of existence, but being ushered into a mystery that is really unfathomable and that maybe doesn't have a beginning because it doesn't have, um, you know, an origin where you can stand at the beginning in time and say, you know, okay, it begins here and it, it goes this far. It's, it's something that is an immediate experience of, I mean, you can't, you know, you can't talk about that experience and to say that it's nothing is to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't work. And um, so many people walk around because they read a lot of spiritual books and they say, uh, you know, neti, neti, I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm nothing. I've realized that I'm nothing. And that, um, and they just carry that teaching around in their head, keep reminding themselves that they're nothing. And that's not the point. And it certainly isn't, uh, isn't an awakening or enlightenment or anything like that. Uh, Jeff can comment it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's that formula, isn't there? That, um, you know, uh, the world is illusion. Brahman alone is real. Brahman is the world. And I think, well, certainly from my own experience, I completely relate to what you're saying because I, I think... Uh, a lot of people get stuck in the uh, Brahman alone is real in, the, in that kind of the emptiness almost behind the world um, and I, I know that I mean, a lot of spiritual teachings do kind of there's a lot of these practices where you, you kind of you know you do all sorts of stuff to f find the emptiness behind this, this, this unreal illusory world and you kind of dwell start to dwell in that emptiness and I know in my own experience after you know a lifetime of really intense suffering and misery it was quite a release to find that to find that emptiness that kind of that silence but it's a very dead place you know and uh it's very peaceful but it's very dead and um <laughs> uh, yeah i mean years ago i used to walk around i used to live in oxford and in, in england and i used to i would walk around um for hours, days, days sometimes, just, and nothing was happening, and there was no one here, and there, it was just, you know, it was in the, in the middle of summer, and, and, you know, families were laughing and shouting, and the sun was beating down, it was, it was, you know, it was, uh, life was happening, but I just wasn't, I just wasn't part of it, it wasn't, nothing was happening, and it was, in a way, after, after years, and, you know, a lifetime of suffering, it was very peaceful, was it? it was a, it was a, a respite. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. from, from the suffering and yet there was a and I rec I didn't recognize it then I recognize it now there was a real deadness to it because there mm. was still a separation there was there was still that sense of uh, me somehow detached from there was a sense of detachment um or even disassociation, disassociation yeah right and at that point you see I, I thought I was enlightened I thought I was awakened because <laughs> I thought that's what how you were supposed to feel when you were awakened and so did I <laughs> yeah I, I remember very um no, very, very distinctly. I, 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 I think I, I've been walking around for I think a whole day, just in in the middle of summer in Oxford. In a, and like Oxford's a gorgeous city, but just nothing. I mean nothing, just void. And I went to, um, I went, I went to lie down in a in a, in a field, um, and uh, the sun was beating down. And I looked up. I was lying on the grass, and I, and I looked up, and there was, it's like a stream of sunlight. This gorgeous stream of sunlight coming straight through the trees. And, and shining on me and I, it was like there was this sense of um it was almost like I heard this voice I didn't I didn't actually hear a voice but it was it was something along the lines of you know Jeff for God's sake live 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 yeah. and I remember something snapped I don't know and I, it's almost like I was back in the world back in the the, the ordinary mix. world yeah yeah you're back in the mix yeah uh -huh. and there was suddenly there was this longing to experience life again Mm -hmm. to feel joy and sadness and pain actually and and even suffering to to really experience that that you know but somehow that that's not to be untouchable yeah unreachable yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah and that that's the, the final bit of that um you know the world the world is illusory brahman alone is real brahman is the world you know the and in the heart sutra you know emptiness is form Emptiness is form. Form is not other than that, that emptiness, and it's it's all 
one but it's such a it's such a it can be a real black hole you know it's such a minefield the the the, the falling into the emptiness thing and kind of staying there and it's uh that's not it as you said that's right. that's just not it <laughs> so I object. <laughs> That's just so hanging out, out in us, emptiness. So we have us four little seekers, you know. We're, we're preferring that, you know, because we're trying to recreate a preference that, uh, you know, nothingness is somehow better than Something. than day to day life, yeah. you know. And uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a gross and huge misunderstanding mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Another another misunderstanding that I've come across is this um the neti neti no mind mm. and um what I've realized is that whether you're identified with your mind or your personal story or not, there is a momentum there, and there is a momentum there even to the mind of the story in the mind you mean a momentum of yeah or, or a momentum of to the, of the movement. The movement of, of of thought. There's a momentum to the movement of thought, and people have different thoughts. The nature. I would say that the nature of all minds is not the same. Not no one. You said that before. You you had the respite from suffering. You were you were suffering. I assume that that was you know psychological in nature. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so there was a deep acknowledgement of psychological pain there. And then you had a an opportunity to be free of it. I've had the similar experience, and um, it's it's almost like you uh, you have a deep acknowledgement of pain, and then you're free of pain. But yet, other people are maybe not so convinced that you're all that free of pain. <laughs> you're, you know, maybe you're not all that free of pain because the mind has this momentum. And uh, some minds are maybe very unhappy minds because they have certain uh, experiences that have formed them or deformed them, I should say, right? And other minds haven't had those experiences. You know, maybe the river flows the way it's uh, spontaneously and it's not thwarted by external environments or internal environments that are imposed from the outside. So... It's like some just minds, to make a clarity. I mean, like mind. When you say mind, you're talking about. I mean, mind is. But it's also like uh, it's way more than just thoughts, right? Because I mean, it might be a sense of depression, or it might be a sense of. Oh yes. Uh, it's very bodily too. It might be a sense of uh, distress, or it might be. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, the body. I would. I would say that when, when when I use the word mind, I'm I'm referring to uh, the content of the emotions, thoughts. And even certain emotional experiences and attitudes that are lodged in this body. It's even like the tenseness and stuff that would block energy, like it's the lack of energy flow, or the or the or the or parts of your body where energy is flowing. Anything, I mean, it's all like anything that prevents you from being natural. Mm-hmm. I would say the mind is anything that prevents you from being natural. And sometimes you can have a meeting, and you can like you said, hang out in emptiness and, you know, meet pe- meet people and just, like, look at them like, <laughs> you know, I am Buddha, <laughs> you know? But, but yet, if they have any sensitivity at all, you know, there's a possibility for them to pick up on what's really going on behind the scenes, the unresolved issues of, of emotional issues and um, denial and uh, just just these things that uh, maybe uh, you never looked at personally and psychologically that just have a momentum of their own and they keep going. So what I what I realize is that although we talk about the mind and the nature of the mind is this nature of the mind is restless. The nature of the mind is never to um, be satisfied. The nature of the mind is dissatisfaction. I'm not. I object again. I object. <laughs> That doesn't seem to be the nature of the natural mind. That's the nature of the unnatural mind, which, for whatever reason, you know, was forced into this kind of cramped uh, space and hasn't been allowed its freedom, hasn't been allowed its space. And so it's a pissed off mind. It's an angry mind. It's a frightened mind. 
it's it's not a natural mind so i, I i'm not convinced that the the mind is um is the enemy and needs to be discarded and needs to be gotten rid of and needs to be neti neti away, but that there really needs to be uh, a real deep love, compassion and spaciousness allowed for that mind to to um, return. It has to be met then. To be met, but also um, to be uh, allowed that the maybe the direction that it took which was an alternative direction to the spontaneous and natural flow that it might otherwise have taken. That that direction has led to all sorts of distortions and distortions in attitudes and distortions in behaviors and hurting other people and hurting yourself. And if you're hurting other people and hurting yourself, I'm sorry, but you're not enlightened. You're not awake. Isn't an inter- uh, distortion? You might be awake. You might have an awakening an... <laughs> glimpse, but you're, you're, it's, you're not Isn't integrated. Isn't distortion uh, like a, an interpretation? I would say no. No, because you can, I would say distortion is not just interpretation. Um, because. Because uh, how can you have a distortion without a benchmark? Well, yeah, you always have a benchmark, and the benchmark is what's natural as opposed to what's unnatural. Can you know that? Can you know what's natural compared to what's unnatural? I mean, is that something that's obvious, or is that just another benchmark? I, I think it's our own inner wisdom that we've talked ourselves out of. Don't look at me. Are you sure about that, Jeff? <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. He's looking at me for an answer. Yeah, I'm trying to get support. Because, <laughs> I mean... It's, 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 it's like... Um, it's, it's like uh, someone once said to me, and it was in the context of spiritual direction, that... Um, uh, the law is the minimum of love, and love is the maximum of the law. There's something within us that knows it's more human, if you will, you know, to um, to love and to listen. And there's a beauty there. There is something there that seems less distorted than going to war, you know, whether it's with yourself or others. And I think it's this, it's really not, it's, it's the absence of conflict. If there was an absence of conflict within, there would be an absence of conflict without because the interior state always determines the outer state, the exterior state. And we go around and try to fix everything exteriorly when people are walking around with inner conflict and part of it is because they have this benchmark that maybe is unrealistic and they're trying to live up to their expectations or trying to live up to other people's expectations. So they take what Krishnamurti would talk about. They take an authority outside and now they place that authority inside and they create opposition. So I'm not, I'm not saying that, but I am saying that if you're harming other people or if you're harming yourself, you're not you're not enlightened. How can you meet your mind, you know? Okay, and we said the mind is more than... We, we gave a description of mind being the body and the feelings and the, and the, and the holding pattern and, and the energy flow. But how can you meet these things if there's, a, if there's some kind of a preference? You know, the ones you prefer, you can meet. The ones you don't prefer... How can you meet them? And meeting means like somehow accepting or invited in or... or, or be, where do you, well, how, how is there wholeness? But meeting... Isn't that part of wholeness? Meeting, meeting is, um, is not accepting. Meeting is just, just talks about an encounter. A meeting is just an encounter when you encounter something. And my experience, and you can comment on this as well, but my experience is that everything announces itself to you. Everything comes to meet you. You, you just where you're at. You are where you are. And everything will come to meet you. You don't have to go out and search for anything. You don't have to go out and chase anything down. Everything will come to meet you. And I think that's why people run away from silence is because they're afraid that everything's going to come to meet well, them. Well, I mean, they just uh, experience <laughs> that a lot of things come, you know, and yeah. then they realize this is a this is a creepy place, you know. Right. Mm. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, I like what you said. Everything just, it comes here, it arises here. And 
then the it's like then the war begins you know then, then the the naming begins and the rejection begins and the resistance begins and you know anger arises and we've been told that it's not supposed to and that if we were enlightened then it wouldn't arise and so we tear ourselves in two you know what you know um or even to call say um call it anger even to call anger anger already we're into this world of separation and it's me versus my anger you know already even calling it anger calling it anything uh that there's the there's the separation um and of course you know we we i guess we we never really experience the anger we, we experience what we know about anger we experience what we've been told about anger or fear or sadness or anything we it's like we that meeting that real encounter very rarely happens and i think when it does we don't really know what to do with it because it's it's outside of everything that we've been taught it's you know to meet what arises in that in that aloneness you know in in that sense there's there's no teacher um of that encounter that's that's um it's kind of beyond anything we could we could think and yet it's it's all that's ever happening that that encounter really is it's all that's ever happening you know everything arises here emerges out of we can't really say what emerges out of you know we could say it emerges out of nothing or emptiness or the source but those are all just words it you know thing uh, everything it manifests here thoughts happen and sounds happen and smells happen and um feelings happen and that's a question of what do we do with them you know and that's kind of when it that's where the whole thing begins is uh what do we do with this stuff that arises which we call me you know really uh, um really i i guess there's there's nothing solid there called me there's just this constant emergence out of nowhere and i i think i i think i get what you, i get what you're saying and um <laughs> it's it's what do we do with all of this that arises yeah from nowhere that apparently arises from quote unquote nothing emptiness fullness the mystery you know what do we do with it and very interesting because that has been a question that i formed just recently and the question is what is the major psycho spiritual dilemma and the major psycho spiritual dilemma is what do we do with this energy because everything is everything is energy everything is unified everything is unity everything is wholeness everything is part of this this great um expansiveness that takes all different forms and no form and what do we do with that what do we do with that energy and the choices have always been to either repress suppress which is just another beautiful word for repress right not own right somehow reject reject right? deny reject it, you know because that's what we've always been taught to reject you yeah. know those parts of us that are uh, off color off key exactly that know? we don't because we're not comfortable and, and we're going to be shining you know in order to shine and sing a bright tune we have to uh, throw away all the sour notes right and like like papaji always said you know if you're going to reject something where are you going to put it if everything is the one if everything is the whole rejection you know so so there's this so then there's this rejection you know neti neti i'm not this i'm not that which was supposed to be just a technique to realize what's there all the time it wasn't meant to be a way of life you know i reject this couch i'm not sitting on it i reject jeff he's not here it's just a projection of my mind i reject the show <laughs> and other people in the audience they may but that's not the point it was supposed to be just a method just a technique and um not a way of life and so the energy arises and sometimes the energy is very um uh explosive and sometimes it's calm and uh sometimes it's overwhelming and sometimes it, it's not you know um but the the energy is there and it's like what to do with this energy and 
everyone said, well, you know, we'll press it, we'll reject it, we'll deny it, we'll suppress it, we'll, we'll modify it, modify we'll, we'll, it, we'll work with it, you know, we'll, we'll perfect it, we'll perfect it exactly, you know, or or it's we'll uh, vomit it onto our culture, we'll vomit it onto, onto our to, colleagues, onto our partners, onto our colleagues. Onto onto our supposed artwork, the expression of our soul, which, God, if I got it near any soul like that, I think I'd want to be, you know, maybe a little <laughs> Maybe even God will reject it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, did you ever see the movie um, Oscar Wilde's uh, The Portrait of Dorian Gray? You know, where he has, he um, says, time is jealous of you. You know, that if only uh, you could stay the same and the picture could change. And then there's this, this Egyptian god, little cat, that affects this change. And now the picture starts to take on the, age, huh? the image of the soul. It takes on the, the, the um, consequences, the consequences of the soul. Like maybe when, you're, when you're, um, uh, maybe your eyes get really dark and maybe there's no light and no life left in you anymore and you're just barely a human being because you're just you've just twisted your way into all of these different expressions that have been harmful to yourself and other well, people. Well, twisted away, doesn't it just mean rejected so many things about you yourself know, and there's nothing left. That. There's only like a little thumbnail left after you've rejected all your ugliness what you you uh, assume is your ugliness or your yep. scariness or your uh, but your I bet insecurity it, or but I, I I bet there and then there is a rejection. There is a rejection. That which is rejected, you know, certainly is never integrated. That which is denied is never dealt with. Um, and so rejection is just a glorified version of denial. It can just be a glorified version of denial. So that's the one hand, the rejection. I mean, we can really go into rejection because I mean, we all have a lifetime of experience of it. I mean, I don't think everybody in the audience has felt knows rejected, about suppressing or. Or uh, you know, trying to rework their their selves and so on. But the other thing has to be meeting, right? What are you going to do with this energy? We we said, what are we yes. going to do with it? This is arising. Something's arising, and we can meet it. We never thought of that. I mean, God, how would you want to meet it? I mean, why? I mean, for your own entertainment or for your own disgust or what? But somehow you you meet it. And what does see, that mean? It seems this whole identity thing feeds on that rejection, feeds on that resistance you know i think as krishnamurti said you know in the gap between subject and object lies the entire misery of of, hum, of uh, humankind humankind mm. in the gap between subject and object it, it's like there's this gap between what is and what should be you know yeah. that seems to fuel the whole thing between this what's arising and what should be and this image i have of, of myself we we live it's like we live with an image of ourselves we live of, with this image of who we should be how our lives should go what what this should look like you know so it seems that this whole identity thing feed, feeds on this rejection on this gap between what's happening and what should be happening you know and uh i've heard that gap just called suffering plain suffering, suffering you know yeah I mean, that, uh, you know, when something's happening and the birthday cake is there yeah. and you blow out all the candles and you're making your wish, that's what should be happening and there's no gap and you feel great, you know. Yeah. And then all the rest of your life, <laughs> and the gap goes bigger and smaller. And Yeah. I would agree with that, but I think there's a challenge. And the, the challenge is, you know, neither, um, you know, a spontaneous expression that comes from... Um, uh, from a certain place, a certain level of action. And then the other is a rejection and repression and suppression. But there's also the opportunity for transformation or, or transmutation, you know. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean well, meeting think, it or is that something you have to do it? I mean, it's, I, not, it's so easy to take it as something I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to transform now. Right. It's. I don't think it's something you can do, you know. Uh, I think sometimes it's the circumstances of life that uh that really um hammer at us and and chisel away you know maybe uh certain blindnesses um certain um patterns uh that you could probably throw the whole thing out completely you know disidentify you know disidentify from from your mind break the relationship you have with your mind and and then you know you just live perfectly perfectly healthy and happy, you know, without a mind. 
But I've I found right exactly. <laughs> well, well, I mean exactly. But then I but then I found maybe you know maybe it's better to have a marriage than uh, than a divorce. You know, let's not go for the divorce of the mind from from you know from uh, self or from mystery or from beingness, but a marriage between the head and the heart. That this mind, you know, you know, it's not ha it's not in conflict for no reason. You've put it in conflict yourself. By taking certain um, expectations that maybe were handed down to you or maybe given to you by the environment, placing those expectations with si inside yourself, and now creating this war, uh, who I am versus who I should be, right? But yet, there's also an opportunity for growth that in a lot of other mystic traditions, there's the there's the death, there's the death like. Uh, uh, Bunan said, um, die in this life and be absolutely dead. Then do whatever you want. It's all good. But before the death, if you go around doing everything you want, it's just the glorification of the ego. It's, it's going to be hard to understand what that means, you know, like, I mean, the death. die before you have you to do go anything, through die completely. Night. Yeah. Dark night is like, okay, one thing that got me is when you said, uh, that purification. Your, your on, reality is, 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 is an onslaught, you know, somehow reality is breaking you apart, you know, but really what it's doing is breaking your concepts apart because anything, anytime you have a, a wall of concepts, you're trying to fix the universe and saying, oh, this is how I see how it works, you know, here's my concepts. Well, reality is always going to be chipping away at that if it's not just smashing the hell out of it. It's going to, and then that's what a breakdown is, you know, like a, a midlife crises or, I mean, uh, your concepts are crumbling. But even to say that, that's what a breakdown is, that is a concept right there. That's a formulation that you've just put together that's saying, you know, when something um, comes in and uh, and the way that you said it was, was better than I could reiterate it. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying that concepts conflicts... are fixing the reality. Reality is not fixed and it's not, it cannot be contained. So then, I um, mean, concepts always have to uh, be whittled away or uh, either whittled away or flaking off or, or just okay. smashed okay. to, to let, smithereens. Let's, let's make a distinction between, and not a separation, but make a distinction between, you know, who I am in my beingness and my completeness and my relationships, you know, and my experience of um, personality, my own, and maybe an experience of other people's personalities. Because when you're, when you're, when you're alone with the alone, Everything is really peachy. It's really easy, you know. Uh, to to not be is probably the easiest thing in the world, you know. Um, and to be alone with alone, or to say everything is me or everything is myself, that's wonderful. But there's other people when you enter into a relationship with with someone, you know. And recently I got married, so I was invited to, you know, embark upon that journey and that challenge. That. It's not just your concepts. You're dealing it's their with, concepts too. Well, yes, but your concept and their concepts and the interaction of those two concepts, you know, uh, forms your life situation. It might not form life, you know, the, as the whole, you know, the, the, the Tao, but it does form the 10,000 things, you know, the expressions. And unless that's dealt with in a skillful way, and this is where I really, I really. What does like it mean, though? Does it Pamela mean you have to Wilson. have an average concept that, that, that's half of hers and half of yours? It, it means you have to be skillful, and to, to be skillful means that um, there's some wisdom and some love that's available to you because you're not hypnotized by your own egoic sense of self and that something new is able to come in in the absence of the known there's this new that's able to come in which is better which is better than your habitual way of acting it's better it's better more skillful. Is a killer. i can't figure it's, out this better it's more skillful it's more whole it's more natural it's more in line with what you were meant to be. Doesn't that really beget a past and a future immediately? It begets a past and a future and a flowering of 
godliness or flowering of beauty. Maybe Osho talked about uh, flowering of godliness, um, of catharsis, a catharsis, a, a cathartic release of um, this interior conflict that people could carry around that project onto all of these other people and harm relationships and um, and harm themselves in the process and create uh, chaos, you know, in the world. Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. Um... An arm wrestling match will follow. No. <laughs> yeah, relationships is an interesting one. Um, you know, it, it's... I, li I like to, um, to talk about, you know, when, when people fall in love, when they first fall in love, um, it's like you don't know each other yet. You know, you don't know anything about each other, and yet suddenly there's that mystery, there's that fascination, and you you really hear them, and you really see them. And, you know, they're not yet yours. You haven't yet claimed them as, as yours. You know, they're not yet your girlfriend or your boyfriend or... Your wife. Your wife. Right. Yeah, you just see them. And yeah. in that clarity and and then it's the, the knowing begins. You, then, then you start to get to know each other. And then and then you know the the me versus the me and you thing happens the the boyfriend and girlfriend thing happens and then the expectations and the and I think we we call it falling in love for a reason you know it's it's a falling it's a falling it's a falling away of me and you it's a falling away of anything that comes between us all that the knowledge and the so it's it's like meeting in that in the in the unknown you know and. But then what we do, we, we say it's that person, that person gave me that, that person did it to me. And so then we, ha we, have, to, we have to keep them because they, they gave me that experience. And it's like, I mean, the, the way I, I see it, I guess, is we're, we're always meeting in that place. We're always meeting in, in the unknown. You know, I've, I've, I've been with my girlfriend for, for a year and I, so I don't know her. You know, I, it's like, I, I don't, Sometimes I, I I walk in from a, a day you know at work or a day outside and you know this is who who is this being who who is she who is she I I well, you know we we play at calling each other boyfriend and girlfriend but mm -hmm. um it seems so clear that I I can't possess that I can't have her I can't have her and you know. That's where it begins, I think, is in this relationship thing is 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 the possession. It's in the, in the beginning. There's just that falling. There's that falling, and then it's then we start to say we're in a relationship, and then the expectations start, and the you know, and the trying to to keep someone you know for you. Um. So the word, I mean, the the word love for me word love it's it's been it's a really kind of overused word i suppose mm -hmm. it's got so many connotations and what to me the word love points to the the end of separation the end of me and you you know in a sense love is very destructive it's very destructive it it blows away anything that you that you know you know it's like we cling to our knowledge we want to know someone this, this is uh we want to know them almost as much as we, 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 want, we want to know ourselves. You know, in, in our culture, I think it's a big thing to, to, to know yourself, to know who you are, to know your place in the world, to know your status. Um, but there's something about that plunge into not knowing, you know. Uh, it's a kind of death. I think that love and death are very, are very, are very, very close. Um You know, and just, just to, to see. I like the word seeing. I don't really use... Uh, words like awakening or like they don't really mean much to me anymore. I, I, uh, um, or transformation. I don't. I don't know what that means anymore. To be honest, I mm -hmm. I used to. <laughs> I like I like the word seeing. I like the uh -huh. word seeing in clarity. Seeing, you know, and it's like in that seeing, everything is is destroyed. But it's not. It's not actually just nothing's destroyed. Because then you're left with that that person in front, and they might be an apparent person, but there's something there, you know, and, it, and it's it's a constant wonder what is this what is this and to me that that's that's relationship relationship is almost the end of relationship it's 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 
it's very hard to uh, <laughs> impossible to talk about of course it's impossible to talk about but to me the, the word relationship is it's the end of what we call it the end of me and you the end of the known the end and a plunge into something much more exciting much more alive but the, the, the price you pay i guess is you, you can't have them you can't possess them there's no payoff in, the, in that clear seeing there's no payoff you don't get anything right in a sense you lose everything but in that loss somehow you're given everything it's it's very it's very strange it's like when when it's seen that it's not yours that that person or or anything really when it's seen that it's not yours it's fully yours but you can't have it you can't grasp it you can't keep it and that's you know it's kind of like the second choice because we were talking about the first choice what do we do with all that stuff that's coming up things arise okay they arise in the form of a of an other uh, a person that we're close to but it still arises is arising in us i think because it's it's just our impression of that other person, what we paste mm -hmm. on that people, our interpretation of that other person. I mean, there's something mm -hmm. there, but in other words, so then we said that there's the rejection, the modification, and and uh, the handling, and uh, and you know the integration, and all those things, the doing things, and then the other one was the meeting things. So you can meet mm -hmm. things in yourself, you can meet things in the other person, and you just meet it at every moment, like you're saying, it's just totally fresh, mm -hmm. and you don't know who. You know, don't know anything. There's no pattern to know. And uh, I was talking, you know, I I was talking to another teacher, that, and her his uh, his partner was there, and she started to talk, and she, she was saying, uh, talking about the relationship, and they just talk like we don't even know if we're together. We don't know anything. It's just got to be fresh, and it just totally blew me away because I mean they've been together for years, and I thought, oh my gosh, they're so tight. And then uh, I said that to someone else, and they said, well. You know, what they're tight with is God. You know, they're not tight with each other in the sense that they don't know who each other is. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's just... My, my experience is that's where I met. That's where we met. When you say every time you meet, it's, it's, it's the new. Every time you meet, you're meeting in the unknown. Um, and it, it, it is that. You know, I mean, even now our meeting, you know, and and our meeting every time there's always that opportunity to have the impersonal meet the impersonal or have the mystery meet itself or however th that's verbalized. Right. It's more, Kevin, it's more than the impersonal mm -hmm. because it's like that I'm not closing the space in on you. I'm not, you know, and you're different every time I see you. And it's like, I'm not trying to hold you like you were before, you know. Maybe I'm perplexed, maybe I'm not. But, I mean, I'm just trying to say, you know, this this is uh, newness, you know. This is freshness. This is the guy it's that I call Kevin. precisely because it's impersonal, I think, that it can be fully personal. Yeah. It's precisely because it's impersonal that it can be fully personal. And, you, you know, you, it's... It, you know, there's, there's this. Um, it's like when someone asks you your name, you, you don't say, "Oh, I'm I'm no one." There's, there's no. You, you say Jeff, and then you. But it becomes. Uh, and you uh, say, "Who's Jeff?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you do the yeah. inquiry. <laughs> God, yeah. Uh, but then it's once it's seen, it's seen as a play. It's seen as it's like there's no one here, no one there, and yet we play at being separate people and telling our stories of of, of the past, and we don't reject any of that. It's not a rejection of any of that. If, if anything, it's the individual living in its in its fullness. Because it's emerging out of emptiness, it can be completely full and juicy and, and alive. You know, it's uh, it's kind of when you, when you have two two nothings meeting, you know, nothing much happens. You know, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But you're it's, just hanging out in the meditative yeah, state. Yeah. But somehow out of that. You know, out of that emerges the, these two individuals, and that's that's the beauty of it. That's when it becomes fully alive. You know, two 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 nothings. It's kind of it's lovely, but what's the point in a way? Because this whole thing is a play, it's a play of nothing. This whole thing is a it's, it's a play of nothingness, and it, somehow in the seeing of that, it can be fully. Uh, the individuals can be fully individual. And you can laugh and cry, and even though it, it's all passing, even though it's all impermanent, even though it's emerging out of nowhere and going back into nowhere, it's the emptiness playing as form, and that's that's the bit that gets missed. I think you're right. That's, that's the bit that gets missed in a lot, in a lot of these teachings. 
dwelling as the impersonal well as if the personal was a mistake right yeah 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 the the, the a misidentification yeah. of consciousness with yeah. form is how yeah. i've like, heard it this talked isn't about. a mistake yeah jesus you know this isn't a mistake the fact that we we are different in that unity, there is astonishing diversity, and just yeah, the, you have a funny I, accent, and I, I don't. don't. <laughs> <laughs> but that that that's the beauty of this is that, and the the then the stories we can tell, and the the, the histories, and the and the and the expectations, and, and the, and the uh, you know differences in in personality, you know that's what makes it so gorgeous and so so alive. Uh, if it was just the emptiness, then it's lovely, but what's the point? <laughs> yeah, right. What's the What's point? The point? <laughs> and 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 yet in this context of a relationship if you're open to the, here's where I'll talk about transformation, mm. you know. Um if you're open to being honest that's the only way i can really talk about mm. it you know if you're open to being honest no longer concealing things from yourself you know um because let's face it i mean okay you know uh everyone was born you know in in a certain sense right and everyone has lived a certain number of years and through those years you know there is uh a history and identity that that gets developed that you can call you know a compilation of just a bunch of experiences and that there's nothing there for those experiences to to hook onto or to velcro onto there's no there's no i there but everyone has these experiences and for better or worse you know because they don't they don't know what they are or they take it all as um, personal or however you want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. There's a reaction. There's a reaction to these experiences. And that reaction is what causes denial or distortion or um, some uh, dishonesty. There's a real, like a dishonesty of, um, yeah, a dishonesty that isn't, uh, isn't affected by clear seeing, you know, clear seeing is, is, um, I don't even know if I would call that honesty or if I call that beyond honesty and dishonesty both or whatever, it would, whatever it would be. Just but say more about honesty because you're meaning, honesty. you're meaning like uh, fooling yourself. You're fooling yourself. Yeah. Yeah, you can trick yourself and fool yourself just because everything is the play of consciousness, you know, that, you know, let's just go back to when there was no when, when there was no who, and when there was no how, and uh, and go back to um, the beginning, when there was no beginning, even before the beginning, you know, go back to, uh, to timelessness. What do you um, mean? It's a tool for escape? As a tool for uh, denial of um, any sort of uh, issues that you're really not dealing with, you know, that may be interfering in what is the way your life shows though? up. What is transformation? Isn't it just the scene that transforms? Because, I mean, okay, to, one guy who was always telling me, like, if you see dog poop on the sidewalk. You walk you around it. See, yeah, if you don't see it, what choice do you got? You know, you there's, see there's you're compulsion, but, but there's you're, also compulsive you're behavior. You're transformed, you know, you, you may... don't sit in it, you don't step in it anymore. That's a transformation, right? Unless... And so that dog poop is like, it's like all your behavior that hurts you and hurts everyone around you. Unless you have a compulsion to step in dog poop, then but you're you going to keep Nobody, stepping Everybody in the knows hole. they're not going to do it when they see it because they're not, there's no choice. Even you know, when you see it, because you know you're what? not going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to disagree with that. Yeah. I'm going to disagree with that because I don't think that's true. I think that you can have all these things meet you, you know, um, but for one or another reason, you know, there's no resting that happens. You know, you can have all of these things that come and meet you, right? All right. You accept but them. You, 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 you accept embrace them, them. You do whatever, you, you know, just, them. it's just all natural. You're not even doing it. And you're saying like, 
nothing happens. They're just still turmoil. Well, the, 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 the ego or bubbling. the mind or the personality can still be sitting on top of a volcano. And, and here's where I think, um, you know, Osho is very helpful when he, when he brings up the, the Western meditation techniques as opposed to the Eastern meditation techniques and dealing with the Western ego as opposed to the Eastern ego. Uh, because everyone has had different conditionings and different formations. So the cathartic release Cath- of all Yeah, that let me just energy. say that that just means like chaotic meditations, right? Chaotic, chaotic meditations. Chaotic, you know, yeah. is what he called Western because uh, he thought that we were so, I guess, suppressed or something. Suppressed, that we need to repressed. wiggle it out or shake it out, you know, or just blow it out somehow. Or, yeah, just get rid of it, you know, release it to the sky. Whether and it releases or not, at least just stir it up, you know, stir the pot. Well, yeah, but if it doesn't release then you're heavy. You're burdened by it. Right. If you're not released by it, you're burdened by it. I mean, if you can take the semi-tractor trailer, you know, and release that pin and have the, you know, the 40 feet with the 18 wheels on it and have that be, you know, separate. Jettison. Jettison it, right? Uh Yeah. And then you can just, you know, ride lighter, you know. So the question really is, I mean, I think the word enlightenment kind of begs the question, you know, do you feel lighter? Do you feel lighter? Are you telling the truth to yourself? Because when you're not telling the truth to yourself, you certainly don't feel light. I think jettisoning jettisoning, uh, or, you know, shaking it out or whatever is a technique, you know, and it's and and it doesn't maybe it leads to a to a semi scene or a tasting. But I know I I don't think it's any form of itness. You know, I agree with I agree with you, because any jettison that's a rejection, you know, isn't going to work because for for me, it has to be. It has to be the whole. It has to be wholeness. But all of these things, these cast out things, these rejected things, these disowned things, these suppressed things, these um, uh, evaded things, these avoided things, all of those things need to be re-welcomed and re-invited into the space where everything can find its level its balance its proper position my my only uh question would be how much time is that going to take i would say the rest of your life and what if you don't have the rest of your life then you wake up now and you can be perfectly clear there's no problem with that you know um but in terms of um in terms of what's underneath it and if you do energy work and body work you know you can sense what's underneath what the person is not uh not owning you know um maybe it's a maybe it's a sexual orientation or maybe it's a um whatever part of the story that's been believed and rejected which is still buried right what's buried isn't allowed to be natural and so becomes unnatural. And so what I'm saying is take everything that's been uh, rejected, everything that's been judged, everything that's been evaded. Like Thomas Merton said, evasion is the answer of superstition. You know, you can't evade anything. But you have to just allow all of these things to come and announce themselves, come and, and, and meet you, come and be open to the integration process of, you know, maybe just this little itty bitty minuscule thing called the personality, like like Krishnamurti, he says, to uproot our psychological uh, fears one at a time is a psychological absurdity, or to up, uproot our fears one at a time is a psychological absurdity, that once you start to see what it's all about, you know, you can just just kind of throw the whole work away and just be with the with the understanding that this is just um, a mind that hasn't found its real freedom, that hasn't returned to the heart, that hasn't See, and returned I, you know, to when its I true nature. I listen to a lot of teachers. I listen to a lot of teachers, and sure you do. So then, what I'm trying to, what I'm gathering, and whether I'm, it's my super misunderstanding or whatever, is that. Your meeting, when we start talking about meeting a rejection and meeting what comes up, what do we do with the, our question was, what do we do with this, this energy and these, these thoughts and these feelings and everything that's coming up? And we were talking like meeting was one possibility. The other possibility was 
what we've all done for lifetimes is rejecting, modifying, and all that. So what do we do with meeting? With meeting, there is a scene. There is a scene. And with a scene... But is there, there a satisfaction? That's well, wait a question. second. There's a realization okay. yeah. that that's not me. But is there a satisfaction? And so then there doesn't need to be a satisfaction there, because it's not me. It well, just is the right, world. Right. I mean, am I am I way off or or what? I mean, oh, this you're is way off. I'm way I'm off. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like without identifying, and it's not a doing. You just see, okay, the scene, the meeting, scene, and then it's just the play of the world, and it just arises, but it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't get acted out. Maybe it doesn't penalize people around us. But for and me, I mean, in my small way, I mean, so much anger and so many uh, in unuseful struggles have just dropped away. And I don't claim any kind of enlightenment or any kind of any kind of uh, super scene. But I mean, it just seems like it's so easy and natural that meeting is it does you know. And, and there's never a clean slate. And this is why I like Pamela Wilson because she says. She, this is the question she asked herself, you know, to the mind. What would satisfy you forever? What would satisfy you? Not, you know, um, what does that have to do with me? You know, what does light have to do with darkness, which is divisive, you know. But what would satisfy the mind forever so that your experience of life matches your state of being? That's what I think is really a beautiful thing. When your experience of life matches your state of being. When not only do you have this, not only are you this great silence, the eternal silence, right? But now the, the, the lion, if you will, has lied down with the lamb. That there's this harmony that has happened, you know, through no longer fighting, no longer forcing no longer using violence um, upon oneself in a way that allows for a reconciliation or a recollection, a recollection of all those parts that have been uh, abused. You know, for for years I was trying to get rid of this, all the stuff that I felt had been had been repressed here, and um, at some point it was just seen. It was just seen that nothing had been repressed. It was it was this idea that had been planted into my head that there was all this repressed stuff that I had to get somehow accept and somehow when that search to end the repression collapsed the, the repression went too it's just that it wasn't it wasn't wasn't there there was nothing there that was repressed that was always this idea that had been pushed into me from an early age that there's this unconscious unconscious place that I don't know it's mm -hmm. and uh, it just wasn't true I just never found this big storehouse of repressed stuff. It's just that I'd been, I believed that my, my whole life that there was this kind of storehouse. And all the teachers in the world had told me that there was this storehouse and I never found it. And um, So does that mean it stopped arising? These uncomfortable, well, it still could be uncomfortable, but... But they, they were, it, it's not known as uncomfortable. It's, it's like, it's like, you can't even know something as uncomfortable if you've been told that there's this perfect place of where there won't be the, the discomfort. It's like one, uh, a few years ago, one night I was lying in bed. I think I told this story and I, I was lying in bed and in the middle of the night I, I woke up and I, I had some sort of rash down below and I'd been scratching myself so much that there was skin peeling off and blood all over my bed. And I, oh, it was, I mean, and I, I just I couldn't get to sleep. It was and um, it was it was so uncomfortable. It was just and all over my wall. I had plastered all these spiritual um, sayings and teachings. You know, accept the pain, be one with the pain, uh, become become this, and and uh, and uh, move towards and like you know. It was always always there were all these teachings of becoming of of doing. And I and at some point I was like I was like that's it's all bullshit. Mm -hmm. It's bullshit. The becoming. The game of becoming, of allowing, of accepting, of moving towards some future goal, you know. Why do I want to be like them? I've never met anyone who, you know, they're, they're all these teachers, they say they're wonderfully peaceful, but how, how, do, how do I know? What does that even mean? Why do I want to be like them, even if they were? And, and I just found myself, I tore, I just tore down all of the, all of the, the quotes and the, the sayings and the, because th this pain was real. 
the, the, the pain was, was real. And, and somehow when that search to end the pain fell away, that so did the pain. It wasn't that it wasn't painful. It's just that I didn't know it as a pain anymore because there wasn't this reference point out there that I was comparing it to. So when those reference points fell away, so did this, 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 this pain is like the, the search to escape the prison. When that falls away, the, the prison goes too. And it seemed that there never was this prison. This is just my experience anyway. I, I can't speak for anyone else. I really appreciate that, you know, and I really appreciate both you guys coming here and being my panel of no experts. <laughs> and, uh, I think, you know, we really talked about a lot of things that really hit people like as a super puzzle, like they just, and sometimes a puzzle, you know, you can go through it and sometimes it just blocks you and stops you. And so just talking a little bit about uh, things that are not so clear or may never be clear. It's, uh, I think it's kind of like oil the mechanism and just allow us all to go forward. And we just truly appreciate it. One more episode, Never Not Here. And uh, we're uh, so pleased you came. And uh, that's all for tonight. Thank you. Dance, what will you say?